Today I'm going to show you the most effective way to handle integration and automation of your Rappi knowledge base using Dropbox, Trive and Make.com. We will set up a system where updating a file in Dropbox automatically syncs your knowledge base with Rappi so that you don't have to manually upload your files over and over again when you make a change in your knowledge base document. And this will ensure that your voice agent always have the most accurate responses. This system is perfect for clients who aren't very technical and don't want to deal with manual updates. So if you want to provide a top quality service I recommend implementing this method. To make it easier for you, you can get the make scenario from my resource hub. You can find the link in the description below. So the first thing we have to do is go to trim.ai and create an account if you don't already have one. Previously I made an account so I'm just going to log in. And once you logged in, you will see a dashboard. Here we need to create a new data set. This is where we will store our knowledge base. And inside the data set you can create chunks, you can organize your data. So I'm going to give a name for our data set. I'm going to call it test2 and click on create new data set. And you will see a bunch of data. Here we will see the data set ID that we are going to use to make a connection between make and Trive. To show you what we are going to do with this data set, let's go to the API docs. And I want to find the upload file endpoint. Here it is. We are going to use this endpoint to upload our knowledge base and Tree will separate our document into chunks. Chunks are basically a smaller sections of a larger document that are created to improve searchability. And in the context of Webpy and Tree, documents are broken into smaller pieces so that the AI can process and retrieve information more efficiently. So instead of scanning through the entire document, it will search through smaller sections to find the best match for the user's question. And of course, this makes responses faster and more accurate. We are going to use this endpoint to upload the file to Trive and if we go down a little bit we will see that we need to provide the file in a base64 format and it says that we need to provide in a base64 URL format which is a little bit different so I'm just going to look for it in the search here And it will give us an answer of what we have to do with the base64. When we have a base64 string, we need to replace every plus into minus, all the slashes to underscore, and we also need to remove the equal signs from the end of the string. In the make.com scenario, we are going to process all these requirements and then upload the file to Trive. To get started, let's go to make and create a new scenario. I'm going to call it knowledge base. And the first module will be Dropbox because we will upload our documents to Dropbox and we want to watch the changes that we do with a specific document. So if we update a paragraph, it will trigger this scenario and it will automatically upload that to Webpy. We need to select watch files, connect with your account and here we need to select the path within Dropbox where we will keep our knowledge base. So I'm going to select test and for the limit I'm going to set one click on save here we can keep from now on and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to upload my knowledge base to Dropbox I'm going to upload the document my knowledge base will be a frequently asked questions about a hotel you can see that we have questions of when is the check-in time do you offer airport shuttle services etc so I'm going to feed this information to our web agent. The next thing we have to do is go back to make and click on run once. And it should retrieve the information about our knowledge base. As you can see, it retrieved my knowledge base. We have the name, we have the file ID and we have the path display. This is the data I'm going to use to download the document. The next module we need to add is a Dropbox module again. And we need to select download file make a connection with our account. When we have that, we just need to select the path display here. So it will know which file it needs to download. But to make it easier, I'm going to store this path display in a variable. When I want to test this scenario, I don't want to make any changes over and over again or upload a file to Dropbox. I can just trigger it and it will download the document. Let's create a set variable module. For the variable name, let's say path, and I'm going to paste the path we received from the Dropbox module. So this will point to my knowledge base here. 
the next thing we have to do is map our variable and run the scenario. Awesome, it looks like we could download the document. We have the data. This is the data we need to format into a base64 string. So the next thing we have to add is a set variable module. I'm going to call the variable name base64. Here we need to select the base64 tool. And let's select the data that is coming from Dropbox. Let's select it, save and run the scenario. Awesome, it looks like it worked. It formatted the data into a base64 string. Now we have to apply those rules that we read here. We need to replace the plus characters into minus first. Let's go back to make and create another set variable module. Let's call the variable replace plus and we can use the replace function. So let's go to the text and binary functions tab and let's find the replace. The first parameter should be the base64 string. The second parameter should be the character we want to replace. And the third parameter should be the character we want to have instead of the plus. So in our case, it will be minus. Click on save and we can also rename this tool. So I'm going to call it replace plus. Awesome. Let's clone this. And we need to replace the slashes with an underscore. So let's do that. Let's change the variable name. I'm going to call it replace slash. And here the first parameter should be the replace plus. The second one should be slash. And the third one should be underscore. Click on save and rename this module also. Replace slash. And there's one more character that we need to replace and which is the equal. Let's clone this. Rename the variable, replace equal, and here let's select the replace slash, add the equal, and for the last parameter let's select empty string. Click on save, and also rename this module, I'm going to call it replace equal. Cool. So the next thing I want to do is I want to get all the files that we previously uploaded to Trive. And if we already have a file, I want to update it. But if we don't have a file, I'm just going to upload a new one. Let's create a new module where we fetch all the files. Let's select HTTP and make a request. And if we go to the Trive documentation, we need to find the get files for dataset endpoint. Let's copy this URL. Let's go back to make and paste it. And here we need two parameters, the dataset ID and the page. So for the dataset ID, let's go back to the tree dashboard and we can copy this value. Let's paste it. And for the page, I'm going to set one. And we also need to add a couple of authentication headers. So if we go back to the documentation, you can see that we need an authorization string. Let's end this. And we need to provide our out token. So if we go back to Trive dashboard, click on create new key. I'm going to call it Vapi test and click on create new key. I suggest saving this key somewhere because you're only going to see it once. So let's copy it and we can paste it here. The next value we need to provide is the TR dataset, which is just going to be the dataset ID again. And we provided it in the URL, so let's copy this. Cool. Click on save and let's test it. It looks like it worked, but currently we don't have any files uploaded yet, so it didn't give us anything. The next thing we need to do here is create a router module. And the first route will be where we will take care of updating the file. And the second one will be where we upload a file. We don't have a file yet, so I'm going to start with the second one. Here we will also need to create an HTTP request, so I'm just going to clone this. And let's go back to the documentation and click on upload file endpoint. Let's copy it, go back to make, paste it here. This is going to be a post request 
And in the data field, we need to provide the base64 string that we previously formatted. I'm going to copy all this and paste it into a JSON format there. When we have a result here, let's just copy this. For the body type, we need to select row and it should be an application JSON. Let's paste the result. And the only parameters that we need here is the base64 file. We can leave the create chunks and we also need the file name. So I'm going to delete everything else and only leave these. Delete this and also this. And here, let's select the replace equal variable. And also replace the file name. We can get that from the Dropbox module. And here, we need to remove this comma, otherwise the request will fail. Let's also parse the response and click on save. Let's try running the scenario. It looks like it worked. So let's go back to the trip dashboard. And now we can see that it created chunks from our document. So in our case, it created one chunk. We can check out the chunk by clicking on search. And if you click on show more, you can see that it kept all the frequently asked questions within one chunk because these data are related to each other. We can also go back and test it. Let's click on chat. And I'm going to ask for the check-in date. What time is the check-in? And it should give us the correct answer, which is 3 p.m. If we go back to Dropbox, we can see that it gave us the correct answer, which is 3 p.m. Go back to the make scenario and let's check if it uploaded the file. So I'm going to run this module. As you can see, it gave us the result. We uploaded file name frequently asked questions. And now we can start working on the first route. The first module we are going to add here is an HTTP module. I'm just going to clone this. And here we need to set up a filter. This filter will be responsible for checking whether we already have a file uploaded or not. I'm going to call this already uploaded. And for the condition, we need to add the file name that is already uploaded. It looks like I made a mistake because I didn't parse it. So if we go back, parse response, and let's run this module again. Now we have the parse response, so we can go back to the filter. For the condition, now we can add the file name. And it should equal to the file name that is coming from the Dropbox module. Click save. And at the HTTP module, we need to handle deleting the files first. And when the file is deleted, it will upload it again. Let's go back to the documentation and let's find delete file. Let's copy this URL and paste it here. This will be a delete request and we need to switch the file ID that is coming from the HTTP module. So I'm going to open this up and let's select the file ID. And there's one more HTTP module we need to add, which will handle deleting all the chunks as well. Go back to the documentation and we need to find the delete group endpoint. Copy the URL, paste it in. And we need to switch the group ID with the group ID we received from the HTTP module from here. Let's find it. Open this up and you can see the group ID here. Let's go back to the documentation again. And you can see that we need to add one query parameter, which will be delete chunks. So let's copy this and add a query string delete chunks and I'm going to set this to true so it will remove all the chunks that it's connected to the group click on save and now we can try this out as you can see first it went to the first route then it went to the second route so if we go back to the tree dashboard and refresh it we see that we still have one chunk so it didn't upload another document and created another chunk it replaced it now we need to set up Webpy, so let's go to the Webpy dashboard and create an assistant. And create an assistant, let's call it Eva. We can leave the blank template, click on create assistant. I'm going to set a very simple first message. Hey, how can I help you? And for the system prompt, let's say answer to all the questions from the 
knowledge base. And now we need to connect Tree with Webpy. So let's go to the documentation. Here we need to scroll down a little bit. We are going to use the bring your own key method and scroll to step three. Here it says that we need to add our tree API key to Webpy. So I'm going to open this link, which will navigate us to the API keys page. Here let's find tree. We need to get our API key. We used it in make, so I'm just going to copy that. Let's paste it and click on save. Let's go back to the documentation. And now we need to create our knowledge base. So let's copy this and go to the API reference. Let's find the knowledge base endpoint, post knowledge base, and we can trigger this endpoint from the website to create our knowledge base. So we can click on play and we need to paste our Webpy token here. So let's go back to Webpy, click API key, and you need to copy your private key. Go back to the API documentation and paste it. Click on done. And here we need to update these properties. So let's open the documentation again. And we need to apply all these values. If you look at it, it's going to be an import type. So we can switch to import. The provider ID should be your Triv dataset ID. So let's go back to Triv and copy this. Let's open this up. For the name, let's set Triv BYOK. And for the search plan, and let's see what we need. For the search type, we need to add semantic. And for the score threshold, we need to set it to 0.2. Now let's try sending a request. Nice, it looked like it worked. So let's go back to Webpy. Let's go back to our assistant. We need to refresh it. Now we can select the knowledge base, which will be Triv BYOK. Then click on publish. Now we can try it out by calling the assistant. Hey, how can I help you? Hi, what time is the check-in? The check-in time is from 3 p.m. Early check-in may be available upon request and some Cool, it gave us the correct response. Now let's try updating our knowledge base and see if our agent reacts to that. So let's go back to Dropbox. I'm going to edit this file. And let's change the check-in date. I'm going to set it from 1 p.m. Let's close this. It successfully updated it. Let's trigger our make scenario. deleted the old file and created a new one. Let's call the assistant again. How can I help you? Hi, what time is the check-in? The check-in time at the hotel is from 1 p.m. On make, don't forget to switch the first module because currently we are triggering a set variable module. So let's delete this and let's add the Dropbox module. Let's select watch files and select your path. Mine is test, set the limit to one. We can limit this from now on. And here we need to switch the reference. Delete this path and we need to select the path display. And you can activate the scenario. So this will look for changes every 15 minutes. If you try to run the scenario now, it's not going to return any data. But if we go back to Dropbox and edit the document again, for example, let's switch it to 4 p.m. Let's close it, go back to make. And if you trigger now, it's going to get the updated file. So let's run the scenario. You can see that it triggered the whole scenario deleted the old file and uploaded the new one. And that's it. Now you have a fully automated system that keeps your Webpy knowledge base automated without doing any manual work. If you found this tutorial helpful, you can get the make scenario from my resource hub. I'm going to put the link in the description below. Guys, if you have any questions, let me know in the comments. I'm happy to help. Thank you for watching. See you in the next one.